Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite fields of mathematics, subfields of mathematics, whatever you want to call them, subfields, fields, whatever, doesn't make any difference. My very biased collection, of course. Um, usually subfields nowadays, what I mean by a subfield is something where there is some active form of research. So maybe Euclidean geometry doesn't quite count as a subfield anymore. I've um, got a fun, fun story here. So Euclidean geometry was kind of very popular around 1850-ish, and it kind of died out. So mathematics, as everything, is also um, part of trends. So the trends are part of mathematics. The other way around, mathematics is part of trends, trends are part of mathematics. So some fields are sometimes trendy, some fields are not so trendy, and whatever. It kind of depends a bit on when you film your video, you know. And today I would like to talk about... Um, one of the more trendy fields in some sense, and not ultra trendy, but also not, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. A very beautiful field, which is a mixture between complexity theory, so kind of the, how difficult it is to compute X, Y, Z, and how to find algorithms to compute X, Y, Z, and kind of a very classical field of mathematics, which is um, topology. Right? So usually, kind of the modern, modern mathematics is very often, you kind of the fields you work in are very often mixtures between at kind of the fields you see when you're studying mathematics. Because when you're studying mathematics, you kind of see more the, the basics, if you want, uh, whatever that means. And later on, kind of everything kind of mixes. It's kind of very beautiful. And I haven't realized that until it was too late in some sense that um, I always thought like algebra and, and whatever. And analysis are very different, but eventually everything kind of mixes. And here's a beautiful uh, kind of part of the story where, as I said, complexity theory meets topology, which kind of looks very different uh, from the outset, but it actually is not so much. And my motivation uh, and my theorem that I will eventually show you comes from one of the most important conjectures, theorems, whatever you want to call it, come back to that in the next slide. In mathematics, it's about sphere recognition and it's Poincaré conjecture. We'll come to that momentarily. But for uh, for, for surfaces, so 2D two-dimensional manifolds, two-dimensional structures, which really just means a soccer ball or my favorite object ever, which usually people call a donut, but it's not a donut, it's a swim ring, it's hollow inside. Yeah, so my donuts hopefully are not hollow. So if you buy a donut and it's hollow, yeah, then, then yeah, it's something wrong that's going on. But anyway, so usually people call that a donut, uh, a donut type shape. A donut shape is kind of fine, but it's certainly not a donut more like the swimming type of object, the torus. And they're different as topological objects and that's kind of really easy to decide in this two-dimensional um, set. So kind of the two-dimensional story, part of the story was always kind of very satisfying. And I can't quite tell you who did that. It's somewhere in between Riemann and Poincaré, people classified uh, surfaces, classified two-dimensional um, structures. Up, up to homeomorphism, up to the correct notion and topology. And the classification is really nice. And you can just observe or you can just easily check that something is a sphere, like a soccer ball, or something is not a sphere. It's kind of a really easy problem. Not too difficult. And then, yeah, Poincaré thought about in the famous, famous paper, a uh, series of papers, which nowadays goes under analogous zetos. Not nowadays. It already was analogous zetos when Poincaré published it. But it was like a series of papers, and um, I think I'm looking at the one from 1903, and Poincaré asked a famous question. It's not a conjecture, Poincaré asks a question, okay? but it, people call it the Poincaré conjecture anyway. So um, question and conjecture are slightly different in flavor, so if you write, ever write a math paper or any type of paper, a conjecture is something much stronger. Yeah? You conjecture something if you're like really, really sure and you just don't know really how to prove it. And the question is more like, I, I can't really tell. So I think in this case, Poincaré was more like, I can't really tell. Uh, because the question is also quite difficult. They're exactly the same as we've seen before for, for two-dimensional structures, just uh, for three-dimensional structures. Where classification is, mm, at least in the sense of Poincaré, um, is roughly, it's quite, quite difficult. But maybe the question of how to recognize whether a, sur a surface, a three-dimensional manifold, a 3D version of a surface, is actually a sphere. And this is the famous Poincaré conjecture, 
Um, and it took a while to be proven, famously proven eventually, standing on the shoulders of giants, uh, using a lot of, lot of work of other people, but then famously proven by uh, Perlman about 20 years ago by now, when you're watching this in 2024. It took about, let, let's say it took about 100 years uh, to, to answer this question, not to prove the conjecture, but to answer the, the question, because it's not a conjecture, it was a question. Anyway, so this is kind of a really classical setting in, in topology. The kind of a, a big kind of fun in, in topology is when you learn topology, you kind of learn it in reverse order. So um, probably the first thing you see is like a set based topology, set point topology, which most people nowadays consider as pretty boring. It's just a language type thing. And then you learn um, algebraic topology, which is also not what most people do anymore. And then you come to some some more in interesting huge quotation marks of course interesting fields uh like low dimensional topology and most topological questions nowadays are kind of open in low dimensional topology not all of them there are certainly questions in more classical topology if you want but most of them are in low dimensional topology and this is like like the blueprint example of a question in low dimensional topology. So your low dimension here refers to dimension three. So your low dimension usually means something like dimension two, three, four, five, something like that. So low dimension. So most problems are actually like in low dimensional topology and most of computational topology, not all of it, but most of it is kind of focused on answering questions about low dimensional objects, like the sphere recognition problem, um, knots or whatever, something like that. And so that's what low dimensional topology, no, not low dimensional topology, it's computational topology does. A famous example, in my blueprint example, uh, what makes up the field, um, of course, bias, bias collection, right? So very arguable, you might have a different uh, example or whatever, but my favorite example of what makes this field is the three sphere three recognition algorithm, which I'm not going to explain, but you actually you can run in, in a program. And um, it's essentially, it's an algorithm to decide whether a three manifold is a sphere. It's an algorithm to, to kind of decide the Poincaré conjecture on based on specific input examples where you just give it a triangulated manifold. Triangulation means you have a lot of tetrahedrons because the three dimensional analog of a triangle is a tetrahedron. And this is like really a prototypical example of what computational topology does. Like it, it kind of takes abstract questions like the Poincaré conjecture, the Poincaré question, and um, tries to answer it computationally. Uh, tries to use algorithms, try to sort it into complexity classes and so on. In particular, in this example, um, our sphere recognition, the three sphere recognition was later to be proven, much later actually, much later than Poincaré's conjecture, to be proven then in the complexity class NP, which is a certain type of complexity class, which is reasonably complicated. And actually also in co-NP, in case that matters to you, for comparison, integer factorization is a problem of the same type. Integer factorization is also in NP and in co-NP. And the algorithm itself that you can run is actually not that great in some sense. It has exponential runtime in the number of tetrahedrons, which is, yeah, which is not that great. But somehow, in a kind of in hindsight explanation why the Poincaré conjecture was open for such a long time, because this problem is reasonably difficult. That's all that is to say. Yeah? NP, co NP, it's a reasonably difficult problem, so you shouldn't expect a kind of a nice and smooth solution. And indeed, the Poincaré conjecture, the proof of the Poincaré conjecture is, well, I shouldn't say it's bad, but it's certainly not nice and smooth. You certainly can't do it on in a three line, very beautiful argument. That's kind of a Computational topology essentially gives you, an, uh, well, answers those types of questions and gives you an indication why certain questions in topology are difficult and others are not. And just the theory of recognition is just my, my blueprint example of uh, uh, something you would study in computational topology. But also something like the unknot recognition is the same type of problem. So this guy here is an unknot. Uh, I leave it to you to figure out why. That one is not knotted. So this one is not knotted. So it's actually just a circle. <laughs> and well, the point of this example is to show that this is again a reasonably difficult question. At least my head 
Nah, nah, I can't see that this is a circle. No, this, this looks too difficult for me. This looks not to me, but it's not. And that's why this unknown recognition is one of those um, problems that you would kind of like to know the complexity class of and computation and topology does that for you. Um, and they're really beautiful programs. So Snappy and Regina are probably the most, most two famous ones. I'll link them in the description. Uh, but but computation topology kind of orders problems in topology into complexity classes, but at the same time, because that's what complexity theory does, it also thinks about various algorithms and efficient algorithms to compute something, whatever, homologies, not polynomials, unknotting problems, sphere decompositions, triangulations, all that fun stuff that people would study uh, in topology. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.